All right, everyone, thank you for your patience. Tonight's attendance, 7,767,760 for a live gate of $690,526. Fight of the night went to Joe Ban and Mohammed, and our performances of the night, Eddie Alvarez and Pedro Munoz, $50,000. Eddie Alvarez will be joining us here in probably about five minutes or so. With that being said, let's go ahead and take the first question. Kick us off, John. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike, go ahead. Teammates. Just uh, for Rafael uh, right here. Obviously a d difficult outcome for you tonight. Can you just talk about what went wrong? It seemed like you had a strong start, and then once uh, you got caught with a big punch, it kind of obviously derailed a bit. Yeah, I, no excuse, man. Uh, I was in the best shape of my life. I want to give all the credit, credits for Eddie. He did a great job. But I was with my hands up when I got caught. I, I just saw the punch. I was watching. And that's a fight game, man. Happened, you know. And I won 10 on, my, on the last 11, you know. Yeah, but all the credits for Eddie, you know. He, he did a great job. But I think I just got caught. Yeah, and another one for you. Uh, no champion in this weight class has been able to defend the belt more than three times. What is it about this division that makes it so challenging to stay on top for a really long time? Yeah, it's a tough division. It's uh, one of the deepest division in UFC. And, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll be back. I will, I will get my belt back. Uh, for Joe, very quick fight tonight. It looked unbelievable. How important was this victory for you just after what happened in the last one, your first UFC loss to rebound with such a strong performance? And just how did you see the fight going that quickly when you were preparing for it? Yeah, yeah, it was huge for me. I, I needed a bounce back after after the last fight. Um, you know, the the timeout definitely done me good. Um, I, I didn't see the fight going, you know, going that quick at all. But, you know, I was just glad to get the win. And uh, finally for Derek. You seem very disappointed in the cage with your performance. Afterwards, you said you want an immediate rematch with Roy. Now that you've had a little bit of time to digest it, do you feel any differently, or are you still you know, feeling low about how you performed out there? No, I still want a rematch. You know, I promised my fans a finish, and I never won by decision, so I didn't expect to win <coughs> here tonight, but it is what it is, but I would like a rematch real soon. Yeah, when they were reading the cards, did you feel it was going to go your way, or do you feel it was going to be Roy's fight? I wasn't even listening to the calls, you know. I was just wishing that I would have finished them in the first round. Derek, uh, as the fight was unfolding, I mean, it was obvious the, the, the difference in strategies. You were looking to strike. He was looking to clinch and put you up against the cage. How did you feel your performance was unfolding as it went? Because your takedown defense was there early on. You were able to stay up. So, I mean, were there positives, or did you feel it was negative from, from the beginning? I felt like it was negative. I, I believe I was too conservative with my energy. You know, I, I couldn't finish him in the first, and so I thought for sure I was going to finish him in the third. And I know you weren't listening to the cards, but how about your, your head? What did you think? I mean, it all it basically all came down to that third round, how, how you saw the third round, whether your strikes at the end were worth more than his takedowns. I mean, what did you think? Did you feel confident as you stepped in there? Never in my wildest dreams I ever thought I was going to win by decision. So it was, I guess it was a blessing. Uh, question for Rafael Dos Anjos. Uh, Rafael, there, there was a moment in that round where Eddie Alvarez, you had been rocked, but Eddie Alvarez threw that flying knee and uh, uh, it looked like maybe gave you a chance to recover your position. Were you still out of sorts at that point or did you feel that there might be a moment to turn the, the, the fight around? Yeah, I, I just remember the, the moment that I got caught and I think I end up on top. But then I remember when I was standing, and there was about like 30 seconds left or something, and the referee stopped the fight. A uh, question for Derek Lewis. Uh, Derek, a win like this over a uh, top-notch opponent like Roy Nelson could possibly propel you into the top 10 of the heavyweight division. A lot of guys in your position would be calling out a top 10 opponent rather than calling for that. 
rematch with Roy Nelson. Obviously, uh, getting that finish rather than the decision is, is very important to you. Is that just pertaining to this fight, or is that just a quality with you that you feel like this would just kind of continue to eat at you if you didn't have a chance to, to finish Roy next time? Yeah, it's for sure going to eat at me. You know, I'll <clears throat> My whole camp, we practice on finishing this guy. You know, we believe we could do it. I know damn sure I believe I could do it and to not come out with the, um, the finish in the first round. Like, I, I knew I was going to, like, I knew I was going to, going to, but I didn't, and it, it hurts a little bit. Thanks. Yeah, I've got a question. Um, Rafael, you said just a moment ago, you said, I know I'll be back. You, then you said, I think I'll be back. Do you mean... At 155 pounds, do you think, is this the point where you're going to maybe move up as you had spoken uh, about going to welterweight? I will be back on the lightweight division. I think it's my division. Uh, I'm 31 years old. I still have a lot to do, you know, a lot to improve. And uh, I was speaking, you know, with my coaches after fight, trying to, to figure out what I did wrong, but... You know, when I got caught, my hand was up. You know, I, I, I had a good form at that time. Um, just happened, you know. Um, unfortunately, it happened with me today. But let's move on. Congratulations for Ed. He seemed much bigger than you tonight. Um, I mean, did he feel more powerful? Was he, was he bigger than you expected him to be? No. Uh, I, I didn't feel he that, that, that strong. But... I think the problem, most of the guys on my division look bigger than me. I think because I got a heavy bones, maybe my head's too big. It's kind of heavy. And I have bag, uh, heavy bones, but I didn't, I didn't feel like uh, strength-wise the difference with Eddie tonight. And I, I should ask, people are talking about the fact that there are now no longer any Brazilian champions. Um, perhaps Claudia can change that tomorrow. But is that something that, you know, you, you've internalized? Yeah, I was the only one left, but I think Brazil, it's, uh, it's, uh, was everything where everything started, you know, a lot of fighters, you know, uh, 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 come from Brazil, and we've been doing this for long, long years, uh, new champions will become, new, for sure, I, I believe new champions will come, new champions will come. And lastly, for you, the beast, I'm sorry if, if somebody asked you this, I can't remember. Did you feel very confident when the scorecards were being read? Because I feel like, I, I personally, I thought they were going to give it to Roy, and it was a very close fight, obviously. Did you feel confident that they were going to give it to you? You know, we in Vegas, his hometown, you know, so he, I believe he landed like seven takedowns on me, but he didn't do any damage. And so I believe I got like 50 some significant strikes. I thought for sure that I was going to win, but still, I was still bummed that it was by decision, you know. I don't like going to decision at all, for real. Great. Well, congratulations. Appreciate it. Uh, question for Eddie Alvarez to your right. Thank you. Congratulations, of course, on the victory. Um, you, you, you said before the fight you love being the underdog, you, you relish that role, uh, but obviously you made a pretty big statement tonight. I mean, could you envision the fight going any, any better than it did? Uh, no, um, I, I, you know, I, I, Mark Henry's the brains behind our whole operation. Uh, I, I owe everything to Mark Henry. He's gotten, he's gotten me, he improved so much since, I, since I've been with, uh, back home in Philadelphia. They got my body working in ways, my defense cleaner, and just doing things differently. And uh, I can't take much credit other than just trying to get prepared for the fight. And I owe everything to my, to my coaches and my teammates, so. Leading into the fight, everyone was talking about you've been a champion in every organization but the UFC. And, and, you know, you weren't talking a ton about the title, but now that you have it sitting in front of you, what does it mean to you to add that to your, to your resume, to add that to your legacy? This has always been like a marathon for me, not a sprint. Everybody's always asked me, when are you going to go to the UFC? When are you going to challenge, you know, telling me what I should do and when I should do it? Um, <clears throat> I just think if you work hard enough and you love something, these belts and things like this are just byproducts of it. This will not be here forever. <laughs> uh, but uh, I just think just working hard and doing something you're passionate about is important. 
And, uh, you know, right now we have the belt and I'm the champion. Uh, I told a lot of people I would be, so happy. You, you've obviously throughout your career, you're kind of known, you know, for being in, involved in some crazy brawls. You've had some epic fights, you know, back and forth fights throughout your career. Um, do you feel like this is more of the norm now that you go out and, and dominate? I mean, obviously, Hoffield's a phenomenal fighter. You went out there and dominated. Do you feel like that is the new Eddie working with Mark Henry and the coaches that, you know, maybe those close fights or those battles, or do you feel like you can really go out and dominate these lightweights? I can. I just need to build confidence in my ability to communicate with Mark Henry and, and the rest of the team. I've only been with these guys for like six months, and he has a playbook that's longer than half the <laughs> textbooks you guys got. So I've just been building with him, building with Anderson Frank and Ricardo Almeida, just learning to communicate with each other. And it's, it's been helping big time. I've made so many big improvements. So uh, I'm, I'm excited at where I'm at in my career and the improvements that I'm making, so happy. And last question, I know you're a big team guy. I mean, obviously you're there for your teammates. Seeing your performance tonight, what's your prediction for your teammate Frankie Edgar on Saturday night? Frankie will win the, the title. I, I, I know Frankie Edgar. I know what he's capable of and I know what kind of man he is. He's gonna win that title. Um, I can pinch myself because Frankie walked in the Fight Factory, a gym, a small gym I was training in nine years ago with Mark Henry to do some sparring. And uh, we started working together and I said, every time you come to Philadelphia, I'll come to New Jersey. And then that was that. Me and Frankie worked together for the past nine years off and on. And now uh, we're about to win dual championship titles on the same exact weekend. It's crazy. I can't even think about it. Eddie, congratulations on your win. Um, a couple of interesting uh, future matchups uh, possible for you. Obviously, Khabib's up there. Also, Tony Ferguson, if he wins his next fight. And Twitter's been blowing up. A lot of people want to see a Conor McGregor, Eddie Alvarez fight happen as well. I mean, it's very, very soon. I know you're just sort of relishing the title, but if you had to choose what's next for, the, for Eddie Alvarez, what would you go with? I, um, <clears throat> for me, uh, I, I think by far the best lightweight in this division is Rafael Dos Anjos. Um, I had the better night tonight for sure, but this can go either way. Uh, there's great competitors and there's a real small margin for error. And if you mess up once, it could have been me on the other end of that punch. So um, this guy to the right of me is the, the best in the division. So uh, to be able to come out with a win over him, and before him was Pettis, and before him was Gilbert. These are the best guys in the division. I'm not taking on top 15 top. So I would, I would ask Dana White, please, to give me an easier fight like Conor McGregor. I, 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 I just, I want, I deserve that. I've been fighting the best guys, so I would like a, I would like a gimme fight. So Conor, I'm more than welcome that. Well, speaking of the Conor McGregor matchup, obviously you have a very, very exciting style. How would you see a fight between you two playing out, considering his skill set as well? I just um, look. There's a there's a lot of guys um, in <clears throat> in the UFC who are good at one thing, and they get matched up stylistically well, uh, and they make their way to the top without ever going against the best guys, the true best guys like Rafael Dos Anjos and, and, and the best guys in the division. They sneak their way around them and they live off perception, not what really is. He's one of them. Um, so I think he can get found out if he, was, if he was ever to fight Rafael Dos Anjos or fight myself, he'll get found out very quickly. Last question is for Rafael over here, Rafael. Um, if Khabib doesn't get the next title shot, would that be a matchup you'd be looking to take? Um, I think the only I I won my last in my last eleven fights I won ten. And I really I really like the rematch, you know. I, it's something that I'm looking for. And Khabib hasn't fought for two and a half years. It's hard to, you know, to, to speak about the guy that hasn't fought for a while. I've been active, you know, and I think for me, I would, I, I don't want to take out the Eddie credits tonight 
He did great. He faced the best Rafael dos Anjos ever. I did everything perfect on my fight camp. And congratulations to him. But I think the rematch would be what I would like. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, for Eddie. Eddie, obviously, before you got to the, right here, before you got to the UFC, you were dealing with a lot of contract issues, just a long line of stuff. Was there any doubt at that point, at any point there, that you wouldn't reach this moment, you wouldn't get this opportunity to realize this dream of being a UFC champion? And how, how hard was that process for you before finally getting over here? Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I was put through the ringer. I sold the... We don't make a ton of money fighting, especially if you're not fighting in the UFC. So I sold some, I made some investments and I had to sell them just so I can stay afloat when I was going through that court case and stuff. So I was really uh, dwindling down to nothing. And um, my mind was getting really bitter toward MMA because uh, MMA is a, a, it asks everything of you, like every inch of your soul, it wants everything but sometimes it gives back nothing. It, it tells you when it wants to give back and that you should just every day put your heart and soul into it. So I call it the B word sometimes and uh, it, it's, it's really tough. So yeah, I dealt with that, um, but I'm a pretty positive guy and I kept, kept my eye on a, the little light at the end of the tunnel and you know we got through it. We, we persevered and we overcame. Was there a specific moment you can remember that was, you know, the lowest point and then when you got past that and was it when the court case ended or what was all, what was that moment? Uh, I think, it, I think it was when uh, we sat down, we had to settle with Bellator. I think we had a settle, we had a settlement agreement and uh, I, I thought I was going to get out of it or I thought maybe I, I didn't know what, but we had to end up settling, and the settlement agreement was insane. I just, I shook my head, and I was just like, they just, I'm not ever going to get out of this alive, or what. It was just a terrible settlement agreement, and I, I, I was really disappointed at that time in my life, so. Hi, this question is for Eddie. Dana White in 2014 promised a UFC card in Puerto Rico. Anthony Pettis lost the title to Rafael Dos Anjos. That put, was put on hold. You are also of Puerto Rican descent. Would you fight in Puerto Rico? And maybe who would you like to fight there if that gets done? I, I'd love to fight in Puerto Rico. I would just love to go to Puerto Rico. I, I've never been there. Not, that sounds like a great place to go right now, to be honest with you. Uh, but uh, first and foremost, I would like to sit down and talk with Dana White and Lorenzo Fertitta about bringing the UFC back to Philadelphia. Um, Philadelphia is the biggest fight in town in the country, and uh, UFC hasn't been there enough. And I think we have a reason to throw UFC there now, and we're gonna we'll sell it out for sure. Sounds good, Eddie. <laughs> Sounds real good. <laughs> Kevin Ioli. Eddie, if I if I could ask you. Uh, in, in line with what you were talking about before, you know, when you fought your first UFC fight and Dana made a point after you uh, had lost to Donald Cerrone, Eddie maybe should drop down to 145, and you really resisted that. Do you remember back, and does, was that something that provided even more motivation, like there's another doubter here or another group of doubters that think I can't do it? Yeah, that was a quick decision off one fight. You know, I told him right away it wasn't even a thought of mine, but... At that time in my life, it wasn't a good time in my life. I lost to Donald Cerrone. A lot of people were saying, oh, he's just a Bellator guy. He'll never make it in the UFC. And my daughter, my, I had a baby daughter, and she wasn't doing too well at the time. I lived in a different state in Florida. So, so many things were going not well that I kept telling my wife, something really big's going to happen. <laughs> like, something's got to go really good for us because this is really bad right now. I had a really troubled time just focusing and pay attention to my wife and kids after I lost to Donald Cerrone. Just enjoying life was really tough for me. Uh, so uh, I, I had to overcome that and get, you know, not be a sore loser about it and step up again and fight another guy. And I, I wonder just 
get into your head a little bit. I mean, you know, every time I've ever talked to you, you talk about your family. You mention your wife. You mention your family. And when you were going through those tough times, did you ever think, hey, you know what, maybe I will walk away from this because I don't want to put my family through it and get a job and do the regular thing instead of, you know, going through the struggle and being out of money and not knowing where the next paycheck's coming from? No. I'm, I'm stuck in this, man. I'm not good at anything else, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I, um... Fighting pays the most. There's not, there's not, I'm not, I'm not as, as good at anything else. And I have four children and a wife and we like to travel and do things and, and live a good life and fighting does that for us. So I'm passionate about this. I love it. When I first started it, I, I paid the promoter maybe 250 bucks so I can fight. So there was no money in this. This was never a um, career goal for me ever. This was a hobby that turned into a career. You referenced uh, Frankie Edgar and, uh, and your coaches and everything. Are you, were you close with Bernard Hopkins too? Uh, don't I remember that you and Bernard were close and did he text you or wish you luck at all? Me and Bernard shared gyms in Philadelphia. Uh, I went to Joe Hans boxing gym and so did Bernard. Bernard works out sort of on his own. He got his own little entourage. I don't like to step on his toes or he likes his space. So um, we shared a gym. We spoke briefly here and there. But uh, just as acquaintances, hopefully that can change. Maybe we can talk a little bit. I look up to Bernard. And lastly, I just want to ask you about the ending uh, sequence. It seemed like you know it was a lot of you were aggressive and throwing a lot of punches. Was it the right hand that you felt that you caught uh, Rafael with that was kind of got him on Queer Street and got the fight going your way? You have to say it like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know. I think it was the, we call it the anaconda. It's a long right hook. Um, it was called, the brains Mark Henry called it. Um, like I said, he calls it, I respond, and then it, it lands. And um, we were able to land it. So uh, yeah, I think it was the, the right. All I remember is Raphael was hurt. And uh, I think we had the same number of fights. He's, this guy's a champion through and through. And you can't allow a guy like that to overcome that situation because he's going to come back twice as hard at me in the second round. So I just remember just saying, step on the gas and don't let this get out of the first because if it does, you know, I could be dealing with a long night in, in Dos Anjos. We'll take uh, one final question. Rafael? Hello. Uh, wouldn't you mind, guys, if I ask you, uh, if I ask Rafael in Portuguese? Go ahead. Uh, Rafael, oh, Rafael, você recebeu muitos socos por mais de, mais de um minuto ali no final da luta. Como é que você fez para lidar com isso? Como é que você se lembra desse momento? Você acha que você conseguiria uh, con seguir lutando? E você acha que, de repente, o juiz uh, interrompeu de uma forma mais cedo do que deveria? Não, cara, eu acho que o juiz fez certo ali, parou a luta, eu estava... Eu não estava completamente é, é, desmaiado, eu tava, eu tava vendo as coisas, é, mas não vou mentir, eu estava meio grogue. Mas não vou reclamar do juiz, não. Eu acho que o, que o Ed Álvares fez um bom trabalho. Ele ganhou do, do Rafael na melhor forma. Estava numa forma física muito boa, mas a luta é isso. Eu tomei um soco. Minha mão, eu estava com a guarda em pé, eu tomei um soco ali por cima da guarda. E, como ele disse agora, ele aproveitou o momento que se ele deixasse eu sair dali, ia complicar para ele no segundo round. Mas, ele com a experiência, ele foi ali e, e conseguiu fazer que o juiz parasse a luta. Foi isso. Certo. Eu te pedi só, por favor, para você mandar um recado em português para os seus fãs no Brasil, uh, que, obviamente, agora o Brasil está sem o cinturão, mas, independentemente, independentemente disso, um recado após a sua luta, desse momento, se abordasse também o momento do MMA no Brasil. É isso aí, galera. Obrigado pela torcida de todos. E luta é isso. Um dia a gente ganha, um dia a gente perde, mas eu tenho certeza que eu vou voltar mais forte ainda. Estou é, novo, tem muita coisa para melhorar ainda. E conto com a torcida de todos aí. All right, guys, before we wrap, we actually we have one more press conference tonight, and uh, just if you guys could hang in there. I was just playing with you guys. Um, I just wanted to say, uh, on behalf of the entire UFC staff to the media, it's been one of the most unpredictable 48-hour stretches that we've probably ever seen in our sport. Thank you for hanging in there with us. Many of you 
practically slept over last night. And also hats off to the UFC Fight Pass crew on this great card. What a night. What a 48 hours. Let's do it again tomorrow.